again, friends. We are now in the second week of the month of winter holidays. So far, no suggestions for week three of this month. I hope maybe someone has a favorite tale about the winter months that they would like to hear. Also, I would like to thank... Oh, and forgive me if I totally mispronounce this. Hokulani Ridge for the wonderful suggestion of a colon in my titles. It's so silly. I never once thought of that, but I was raised underground, so... But what I'm trying to say is, thank you, Hokulani. Hokulani Ridge. By the way, that is a cool name. You have made my channel better. This week's story is all about generosity. Giving freely without expecting anything in return. I find that beautiful. It was requested both by my dear mother and by H.W. I do hope you like it. I will now read to you The Shoemaker and the Elves. A shoemaker by no fault of his own, had become so poor that at last he had nothing left but leather for one pair of shoes. So, in the evening, he cut out the shoes, which he wished to begin to make the next morning. And, as he had a good conscience, he lay down quietly in his bed, commended himself to God, and fell asleep. In the morning, after he said his prayers and was just going to sit down to work, the two shoes stood quite finished on his table. He was astounded and knew not what to say. Well, that is quite the sleepwalking skill. He took the shoes in his hands to observe them closer, and they were so neatly made that there was not one bad stitch in them, just as if they were intended as a masterpiece. Soon after, a buyer came in, and, as the shoes pleased him so well, he paid more for them than was customary, and, with the money, the shoemaker was able to purchase leather for two pairs of shoes. Um, isn't this kind of how Little Shop of Horrors starts out? He cut them out at night, and, next morning, was about to set to work with fresh courage. But he had no need to do so, for when he got up, they were already made, and buyers also were not wanting, who gave him money enough to buy leather for four pairs of shoes. And they told two friends, and they told two friends, and they told two friends. The following morning, too, he found the four pairs made, and so it went on constantly. What he cut out in the evening was finished by the morning so that soon he had his honest independence again and at last became a wealthy man. Ha! Huh. I mean, you know, he is doing half the work, so that's not too bad. Now, it befell that one evening not long before Christmas, when the man had been cutting out, he said to his wife, before going to bed, What think you if we were to stay up tonight to see who it is that lends us this helping hand? The woman liked the idea, and lighted a candle, and then they hid themselves in a corner of a room behind some clothes which were hanging up there, which probably caught fire. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> it's um, it's an H.W. request, so I kind of keep waiting for the Hans Christian Andersen gotcha moment. And watched. When it was midnight, two pretty little naked men came, sat down by the shoemaker's table, took all the work which was cut out before them, and began to stitch, and sew, and hammer so skillfully, and so quickly, with their little fingers, that the shoemaker could not turn away his eyes for astonishment. And also he was going to have to sanitize the work table, since they had been sitting on it with their little naked butts. They did not stop until all was done and stood finished on the table, and then they ran quickly away. Next morning the woman said, The little men have made us rich, and we really must show that we are grateful for it. They run about so, and have nothing on, and must be cold. I'll tell thee what I'll do. I will make them little shirts, and coats, and vests, and trousers, and knit both of them a pair of stockings. And do thou, too, make two little pairs of shoes. Then the man said, I shall be very glad to do it. And one night, when everything was ready, they laid their presents all together on the table instead of the cut-out work, and then concealed themselves to see how the little men would behave. 
Boy, I, I hope they guessed the right sizes, or this could be very embarrassing. At midnight, they came bounding in and wanted to get to work at once. But as they did not find any leather cut out, but only the pretty little articles of clothing, they were at first astonished. And then they showed intense delight. They dressed themselves with the greatest rapidity, putting the pretty clothes on and singing. Now we are boys so fine to see. Why should we longer cobblers be? Ha! And then they shouted, we quit, and no one ever saw them again. Or, you know, maybe I should keep reading. Then they danced and skipped and leapt over chairs and benches. At last they danced out the doors. From that time forth, they came no more. But as long as the shoemaker lived, all went well with him, and his undertakings prospered. Huh. Well, I guess I was wrong about the we quit part, but still. Ah, to be blessed by the fae. They don't always get along well with mortals, you know. Just ask Rip Van Winkle. What a sweet little tale. Next week is still a mystery to me, so please make a holiday or winter type request. I would greatly appreciate it. Now is the time I ask you to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget the notification bell so you can be the first to know when my stories come out. I never know when I will finish them, so it's not a bad idea. I would like to thank Pixabay.com. Without their invaluable content, I would not be anywhere as good. If you would like to support me on Patreon, Instagram, or Facebook, there are links below. And now, a special thank you for my Patreon friends. So, so this thing is supposed to take me to amazing locations? Yep. Are you, are you sure? Yep. Hey, really? Yep. I, it's not as complicated as you think. It just, it looks like a window blind. I, oh wait, I, uh, you already turned the camera on? Oh. Yep. Oh, they're gonna know it's a green screen, hold on. Whew, whew. Okay, red leather, yellow leather, I can do this. <clears throat> All right, three, Two, one. I would like to thank my dear Patreon supporters, Robinson, Ida, Darren, Teresa, Brick's Journey, Karen, William, Josh, Colleen, and Callum, and now also Celeste, my greatest fan, and Mom. See, Mom? I am doing something productive with my life. Celeste likes me. I cannot thank you enough for joining us. Thanks to your generous support, we can now go to amazing locations like where I am standing now. I... Wait, it... I thought this was supposed to take me to amazing locations. Why is it still just green? I think it's broken. It's not broken. That's how it works already. <laughs>